Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to ask the question, are body parts splits dead? Before we get into this topic, if you guys are interested in coaching, it's what I do for a living. I'd love to work with you. Check out the link down below. All right, I get this question over and over again. Any of you guys that tune into my Massive Iron Live every Friday, and I do live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, you probably see this question over and over and over again. I thought it was time I addressed it in a different way. I'm going to look at the science, the true science, the meta-analysis of body part splits versus frequency training. And we're also going to look at some quotes from some of the top experts like uh, Greg Knuckles and Brad Schoenfeld, etc. So let's dive into the question because this is important. A lot of lifters believe they must do frequency training to get better results. My goal here is to present you guys with the information and maybe free you a little bit to understand the bigger picture. What does it take for you to get the best results? So here is a belief. The belief is that science killed body part splits. The current belief is that science has proven that body part splits do not work as efficiently and effectively as frequency training. What this means in theory is that if you train a body part more than once a week, you're going to get better results. Now, what is the definition of better results? Well, no one seems to know when you ask them, but the assumption is that if you do a body part split, that the advantage is moderately substantial and noteworthy. Now, before we dive into the meta-analysis and the opinions of the experts, I want to give you guys my stance. I want to preface this information by saying I have no horse in this race. I have always taught that the most important aspects of training is that you use a program you enjoy. Training is a long-term process. To build quality muscle, you're going to have to train five to 10 years. And during this time, I have taught that program really doesn't matter. Just be consistent, focus on a good exercise selection, focus on progressive overload, focus your nutrition, work on your form so you're getting the most out of every set you can. Be patient and use a reasonable amount of weekly volume. If you have all of these massive iron pillars of success in place, then program doesn't matter. I would say of all my clients over the years, about 25% use body part splits, about 10 to 15% use full body workouts, and the rest, maybe somewhere around 60%, use a variation of frequency training, like an upper posterior or a torso limbs or a push-pull leg, programs in those families. Now let's set the table by looking at the truth. What is the scientific truth? The scientific truth is that science doesn't back either. Let that resonate. This is not an opinion. We're gonna dive into the real science, not opinions and not all the bro science that is floating around in the web called YouTube fitness or influencer fitness. It's kind of funny to me, if I can interject before we dive into this, that the concept that frequency training is actually better has become bro science, which is rather ironic. The belief is that science has revealed a decided advantage for frequency training. Recently, we have discovered why this research is showing an advantage for frequency training. And it does show an advantage for frequency training, but let's dive into why. When you look at the total weekly set volume of the frequency programs in these studies, they have been using more weekly volume. They've been using more weekly volume than the body part splits they're being compared to. Basically, a volume bias existed in these studies. The frequency studies were using more weekly volume than a comparable body part split they were being analyzed against. So, this is where the studies broke down. Yes, frequency training was showing an advantage. The reason it was showing an advantage was because there was a volume bias. The full body workouts and the frequency workouts had more weekly volume. So what does this mean in the real world? What does this mean for you guys? How should you train? 
Now, here is the meta-analysis, the efficacy of split versus full body resistance training on strength and muscle growth, a systemic review with meta-analysis. And you can search this information. It's on the web. You can find it just by Googling the title of this study. Now, the conclusion, and this is pulled from this meta-analysis, in conclusion, the present systemic review and meta-analysis provides solid evidence that the use of split or full body routines within a resistance training program does not significantly impact either strength or muscle hypertrophy when volume is equated. And I have that bolded, when volume is equated. This means that when weekly set volume is the same, if you're using the same set volume over the course of a week, whether it's a full body frequency, upper, lower, or a body part split, it doesn't matter whether you train with frequency or body part split. The results were shown to be equal. This is not an opinion. This is the conclusion of a meta-analysis. When the volume, the weekly set volume is the same, it doesn't matter what split you use. And I hope you guys find this to be freeing. Now let's look at a few words from some various experts. This is from Brad Schoenfeld, somebody that we consider one of the expert experts in the world of muscle hypertrophy. This new meta-analysis investigated the effects of split versus total body training programs on muscular adaptations. Unsurprisingly, the results showed similar hypertrophy between the strategies under volume equated conditions. So Brad Schoenfeld states that it wasn't surprising to him that when volume is equal over the course of a week, there was no, no advantage for frequency training. All right, here's a word from Paul Carter. There's nothing special or optimal or superior about hitting a muscle multiple times a week when volume is equated. I don't know who needs to hear this. You can build just as much muscle training a muscle once a week on bro splits. And Paul goes on to list PubMed ID 3055-8349 for anybody that wants to Google search this quote. There is strong evidence that resistance frequency does not significantly impact muscle hypertrophy when volume is equated. And here we are right back at volume is equated. When your weekly set volume is the same, it doesn't matter what frequency or program you use. All right, one more expert, Greg Knuckles, another expert or someone we consider to be reputable in the world of strength and muscle building. There is a lot of debate about training frequency for muscle growth. See what the data actually says. After my article on training frequency for strength development last week, a lot of people asked whether higher training frequencies were also better for hypertrophy. I responded to all of them that frequency probably doesn't matter as much for hypertrophy. Now, frequency can have an impact on strength, and Greg goes on to talk about that in this article, but Greg echoes the opinion based on the research we have seen and the opinions of the other experts we just looked at. Greg draws the same conclusion. All right, so the final word, let's look at volume because this is kind of the interesting thing for me. Understand we don't have a definitive conclusion, but there is some indication because of this research that a little bit more volume might be slightly more beneficial. And we have to apply this within reason. We have to apply this to our own workouts within reason, and we have to remain in the land of common sense. You don't want to force yourself to try to run a program with more volume if you don't have time to sustain it. The one thing we can learn from all this is that there may be a slight advantage to training with a little bit more weekly volume. Because the frequency studies had a little bit of volume bias, that led to them showing a slight advantage over body part splits. So we can draw from this that potentially, potentially a little bit more weekly volume might be better. And we're talking set volume. My final statement here, if we can derive any possible conclusion from this research, it may be, may be speculation that doing a little bit more set volume, not a lot, potentially yields a slight advantage regardless of the training split being used. 
We have to ground things in common sense. You only have so many days a week to train, three, four, five. Whatever the program is, as long as the weekly volume is about the same for body parts and total set volume, you are going to be fine. So I hope this video helps you relax a little bit and not worry about the minutia. Train hard, view it as a long-term process, don't get caught up in the weeds. You're better off looking at exercises than programs. Pick out 20 to 30 quality exercises you really want to focus on as your core and focus on maximizing those exercises rather than trying to maximize a specific program. So guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.